OmniServer is frequently used for accessing information from devices that use non-standard protocols, including such devices as weight scales, barcode readers, and printers, either over serial connections or Ethernet connections. With the widespread availability of touchscreen technology and the common familiarity with and time savings of drag-and-drop functionality across computer systems and applications, we work to evolve the OmniServer user experience with the goal of making it easier and more efficient to build a non-standard driver. In this video, we will step through the most powerful features of the new Visual Protocol Editor for OmniServer, demonstrating the key enhancements to the user experience that will make integrating your non-standard devices easier and faster than ever. So first, I want to show you the changes we've made to adding and editing items, topic variables, registers, and even messages with the new Visual Protocol Editor. To do that, I'm going to start in an existing sample protocol specifically the Modbus Serial Protocol, since it does have a lot of the elements already configured that we're going to be reviewing. So I'm going to start by opening the Modbus R Sample Protocol. And here you get your first look at the new Visual Protocol Editor. You can see it's quite a bit different if you're familiar with the Legacy Editor. Uh, so to start, I just want to show you the protocol data sections and what those look like now. Um, so registers, you can see this is a table-based configuration, like you can click in any of the existing fields for any of the existing registers and make changes to those. Um, you can add new ones, delete existing ones, um, so on and so forth. Same with the items. Um, you can add a new item, delete an item. Uh, we do still support import and export via CSV for all of these. Um, copy. Uh, and uh, so same same deal here. You can click in any of these fields in the table um, and, and change values. Um, we're going to go ahead and add a new item to show you how easy that is. Um, so I'll just call it new item. Descriptions optional, so we'll leave that blank. Um, you select data type. We'll keep that as an integer. Um, and we'll keep the defaults on everything else. And you, you see, just like that, it's easy, it's super easy to add new items um, and do copy and paste to add more items that way or use import-export to add items um, in that way as well. Um, so in, a, in, an Omni server, in, in the OmniServer's legacy protocol editor, uh, such components were listed in a tree view hierarchy and they had to be opened individually for any edits since they were created from a traditional dialog window. Uh, as you can see in the new editor, all these components are editable right in the list view without having to open any other dialog windows, uh, which saves uh, actually a tremendous amount of time uh, when you're having to add a lot of items or make edits to a lot of items or other protocol components uh, in a protocol. Uh, it's actually a lot like creating a list of items in an Excel spreadsheet, but you're able to do it right in the protocol editor. Uh, so let me show you something else that's incredibly useful uh, for components like items. Um, if let's just pick an item, um, if you expand by clicking the down arrow on the left hand side of the item, and it'll expand down and it shows you a list of, of all of the places that particular item is used in the protocol. Um, so we not, but we not only tell you which message or messages the item's used in, uh, you can even click on the specific message. So you can see this item is used uh, both in the read holding registers message, message and also in the preset single register write message. Uh, I can click that and it'll actually take me to the message where that particular item is actually used. Uh, it makes determining where a component is being used incredibly easy uh, and it's a, it's a huge time saving feature if you're looking for where an item is used specifically in a protocol. So the next feature I'd like to dive right in and, and show you the crowning accomplishment for the new Visual Protocol Editor, drag and drop support. Uh, the easiest way to demonstrate the power of this functionality is if I add a new protocol message. So I'm going to go to the response only messages, which were formerly, you, you would have you would have seen those formerly referred to as unsolicited messages. Um, so I'm going to click to add a new unsolicited message. Uh, and I'm just going to call this test message. And we'll keep the defaults on everything else. So once I have the message actually added, I can expand that message to get to the actual received and response fields uh, of the actual messages that are going to be associated with that um, being received from the device or sent to the device. Uh, so I'm just going to drag some components in here. You'll see we've got a we've got a module for favorites, which I'll cover momentarily. Um, control sequences, so that's going to be your control characters, like your carriage returns, your line feeds, um, your your um, your 
your header headers, uh, all of your control characters that are not ASCII. Uh, we also have a list module for your items that are added to the protocol, and that corresponds to the items list up here. Uh, register numbers, uh, any any register numbers available here are configured in the register numbers list. Same thing with topic variables, there's a module for those as well. Um, and error detection codes. So there's the list of predefined standard error detection codes that install with OmniServer. Um, and you can drag and drop those directly from that module. Um, any user-defined error detection codes, which would be configured on the error detection codes section of the protocol data, um, would be displayed here in this list and available for you to use in your messages. Um, so I'm just going to show you how this works. Um, I'm going to add my new item that I added. So you can see it just drag and drops that with the proper formatting. Um, and I'm going to put a carriage return and a line feed at the end of it. So there's my carriage return. And there's my line feed. And I'll also show you all of these modules have a search and a filter field. You can actually, if you're looking for something specific, you can you can type in and it'll 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 actually narrow down so that you don't have to go through the entire list. So you, you'll see that that's easy. It'll it'll find it'll find those based off of what you're typing into the filter, um, which makes any of these that have a long list, like if you have a ton of items and you're looking for a specific one, it'll narrow that down tremendously if you at least know the first couple of letters that it starts with. Um, can, can result in a huge time savings. Uh, so you see, I added a carriage return and a line feed. Well, that's a pretty common. Um, that's a pretty common sequence. Um, and uh, you'll see in the favorites over here, we have a favorite labeled CRLF. So let me just remove these, and I'll show you how we can do that even easier. Um, so you see, I just added that from a favorite. If I open that favorite, you'll see we've got CRLF, the, an optional description of carriage return line feed, and then you have the actual sequence that you want to be saved for that favorite. So it's just it's an easy way. Um, uh, while we're on the topic of modules, um, the favorites is 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 one of my favorite modules that we've added in this new editor. Uh, we're giving you the ability to streamline your protocol creation, uh, especially if you're one of those users that works with OmniServer a lot, and uh, you find that you're using a lot of the same groupings of sequences. Um, like I said. Uh, carriage return and a, a terminating characters such as carriage return and a line feed are very common. That's that's why we're including that uh, as a standard favorite, so you don't have to enter those sequences individually. You'll see uh, uh, with a carriage return and a line feed, I had to do that twice. Whereas if I save it as a favorite, I have to do it once. So I reduced my I reduced my effort in adding a carriage return line feed combination by half. Um, it, now, it literally saved a few seconds, but if you add that up um, across multiple messages, across multiple protocols, across years, it saves you a ton of time. So we're even giving you the ability uh, to highlight and select any group of sequences already defined in a message. Uh, and then you can just right-click on those and save it as a favorite. So, for instance, if I wanted to save this whole thing as a favorite, I could click or highlight it, click Add to Favorites. You'll see it populates the sequence with what I highlighted. And then I can just give it a name uh, and click OK. You'll see it saved that as a favorite. Um, and then if I ever wanted to use that again, I can just drag and drop it. And you'll see it puts the whole thing in there. So that, that's a very simplistic example, um, but you'll see how powerful that is. Um, if you had a lot of repeating sequences um, across multiple messages in the same protocol, or even different protocols for that matter, um, you, you could uh, configure the first message. Um, and then save the part that's going to be repetitive as a favorite, and then you can just reuse that throughout every other message um, and just save yourself uh, a, a ton of time. So that's, that's our favorites, and uh, I'd also like to show you how, uh, how easy it is to show or hide any of these modules uh, based on what you need for configuring your actual protocol messages. So while I'm in this message, I just go to the Dock Settings menu at the top um, and go to View, and you'll see each of those modules that's visible has a check mark next to it. Um, so I can disable or enable the visibility of those modules right here. I can hide all, um, and then like if they're all hidden, I can unhide all, and they'll all be visible again. Um, so just for an example, uh, if I know I'm not planning to add any registers, topic variables, or error detection codes to the messages for a protocol I'm working on, I can simply deselect those, and they won't be visible. So I can go to deselect register numbers, deselect topic variables, and deselect error detection codes. 
And as you can see, that frees up a fair amount of uh, screen real estate, uh, making my editing of the received and response messages and my, uh, and my protocol messages much easier because I've got a lot more screen real estate to work with. Um, and if I'm not going to be using those components anyway, what's the point of displaying the modules for them? Um, additionally, um, along these same lines, if there's a specific layout you prefer to use um, with only a certain handful of specific modules visible, uh, we do give you the ability to set up the layout to your preference and then save that layout. Um, you can save it as either a default or a user-defined layout that can be loaded at any time. So again, that's done through the dock settings. You go to the dock layout menu. Um, this current this current layout where I've 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 hidden register numbers, topic variables, and error detection codes. If I wanted to save that as a layout, um, I can either save it as the default, which means that's what's going to be visible every time I open the Visual Protocol Editor, um, or I can do save as new. I can save that off in a, as as a name. These save as a .dot config file, um, and I can put that in any location I'd like to. Um, and then at any point in the future, either on this same machine or a different machine even, uh, I can then go to dock settings, dock layout, and go to the open, and I can browse to that dot config file, and I can load my specific layout. Um, so it just makes it super easy um, to have that and move it between machines um, and uh, have your layout exactly the way it makes it easier for you to configure your protocol messages. So you, you can see how, how much easier it is to build a message using drag and drop functionality from these modules uh, as compared to uh, how, you would have, how you would have built up a message using the sequence builder uh, in the legacy, in the legacy uh, editor. Uh, one last thing I want to show you while we're here in the message um, is you'll notice that, this, that items are added without any sort of formatting. Uh, if you're in a situation where you need to add non-default formatting, you just right-click on the sequence. Um, and if you've used the Legacy Editor before, you'll, you'll be familiar sort of with the look and feel of the settings available in here. Um, this is where you would go if you needed to define bit access within a byte. Um, like if you wanted a bit within a byte to be assigned to an item, this is where you would come to do that. Um, this is where you go to change the number formatting uh, for the data that's coming in for an item. Uh, for instance, if it's binary um, or if it needs to be a signed integer, uh, a real normal. Um, the, if it's a real, you can define the precision. So if I set that to real normal, you can define the number of bytes and characters in the real format precision. Um, whether translation should be applied or not, whether we need to reverse text, reverse bits, reverse nibbles, any of those advanced modifiers uh, that were all available in the legacy uh, protocol editor, those are available here just by right-clicking on the sequence and selecting format. Um, so that being said, lastly, I do want to point out that even though we're introducing this new visual protocol editor, we do understand that our users may have some reasons for still wanting to use the legacy protocol editor for the time being. So in the short term, we are including both the visual and the legacy protocol editors in OmniServer. So as you can see, by default, the new visual editor is used. So I just want to take a few minutes to, to, to show you how easy it is to switch between the editors. Uh, both with, from within a protocol and also to change which editor uses the default at the server level uh, if you choose to do so. So from within the protocol that I have open here, uh, if I want to switch to the legacy editor, I simply need to go to the file menu and select switch to legacy editor. Uh, you're then presented with these two options. Uh, the default option, make the legacy protocol editor the server default, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you leave this option selected and click OK, the server default uh, will be to use the legacy editor going forward until you change it back to the visual editor. The second option, uh, use the legacy protocol editor this time only, is also self-explanatory. Uh, using this option uh, um, means that if you only want to switch to the legacy editor this one time only, um, then any, t any future protocols that are open will still use the visual editor. So to demonstrate that, I'll go and select the second option and click OK. Uh, I'm going to say no to saving the changes since this is one of my sample protocols. Uh, and you'll see it that open my Mozbus protocol back over in the legacy editor. Um, so just just since we're here, I'd like to show you some of the differences. So if you if you're not familiar with OmniServer, here's what you got to do to edit an item in the legacy protocol. A lot more cumbersome, right? <laughs> um, same the same thing with topic variables. Like you literally have to go into the list, select it, double click it to open it, and make the changes to it. So. That's just a little bit of a comparison for you 
Um, so now that I have the protocol uh, reopened to the legacy editor, I'm going to go ahead and close it. And then if I reopen it, you'll see it still open in the visual protocol editor. So if I follow that same process, I'll go back to file, switch to legacy editor. Now I'm going to keep the first option this time and click OK. You'll see it open, it open in the legacy editor. If I close that and open it again, you'll see it opens in the legacy editor again because we changed the default server level option uh, for which editor to use. Now, it's, it's also possible to switch to the visual editor from the legacy editor, from within the legacy editor. Uh, so you simply use the toolbar button that's farthest to the right. You see it has a, has a tooltip that says switch to visual protocol editor. So if I click that, uh, you can see a similar dialogue, dialogue window opens with similar options. So the default selection changes the default editor to the visual protocol editor. Um, and that's the server default. Uh, the second option changes to the visual protocol editor just for this one time only, but any future opens will still use the legacy editor. So let's leave this as it currently is, and I'm going to go ahead and click cancel. And I want to show you the central setting that allows you to control the server default for which editor to use. So I'm going to close my protocol. Uh, and uh, back over here in the main Omni Server configuration window, we need to go to View, General Options, and I'm going to select the Protocol tab. Under the section Default Protocol Editor Options, uh, you can see that there's an option for Legacy Protocol, and that is currently selected because we made that change. Um, changing this to the Visual Protocol Editor will revert that to being the editor that's used by default when opening a protocol. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and click Apply. And then I'm going to click OK to close that dialog. So then if I go back to my protocol and open it again, you'll see we're back to using the Visual Protocol Editor again because that's the default. So uh, we want your user experience to be as easy as possible. So we will continue to include the Legacy Editor for some time to ensure you, our users, have the time to get familiar with the Visual Editor and grow comfortable using it. That being said, I would encourage you all to try out the new editor and as always, share any feedback you may have so that we can continue to improve your user experience. We hope you find the new Visual Protocol Editor to be as intuitive and user-friendly as we think it is. Our benchmark testing has shown that the new, e new editor saves you up to 40% in time spent configuring a protocol when compared to the legacy editor. For any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to contact us using the information on the screen.